ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another third-party unlicensed prop replica review. Now, today we are just taking a look at one wearable Spidey mask, nor are we taking a look at two. But in fact, I happen to have three different one-to-one -one scale fully wearable Spidey masks that we'll be dissecting throughout the course of the video. Now, I got these from Comic Sanctorum, but do bear in mind they are third party and they are unlicensed. That means the company that happened to make these, whoever they may be, don't have the correct intellectual property rights. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only, as, as I said, these are unofficial products. If you are down in the description, why not hit the subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. Now, we will be going through these masks one one by one, starting off with Toby's red and blue suit. Now, I thought we'd start with the OG being, of course, the red and blue suit mask based on the 2007 Spidey film starring Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker. Now, I personally adore this suit. So, being able to own a one-to-one -one scale wearable mask, yeah, I was pretty excited at the prospect. Now that I have it in hand, though, I am really surprised at how good this mask looks and feels, especially when you are wearing it. Now, people do give me some flack in the reviews for not putting this on my noggin, so I went out and got a headstand, so this should give you an approximation as to what it will look like on a head. There is kind of no use me putting it on, number one, because I don't fit in a light box, and number two, because I've got a very small head, so seeing it on me won't really give you any idea of what it's going to look like on you. This hopefully will, and as you can see, it fits very nicely. The face shell underneath, which we'll discuss in just a second, is very angular, but it was like that in the movie as well. When you pop it on your head, you may have to stretch it out just a little, depending on how wide your noggin is. But it is rather accommodating because it's mostly made out of fabric. What we are going to do now, though, is take it off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. Here we have it, up close and personal. Now I'm pretty sure you all will have a couple of questions as to what this thing is made of and how on earth do you get it on your noggin. Well, quite simply, there's a zipper up the back. I also like how there's a web line running right down the edge of the zip, so when you do it up, it looks almost completely seamless. The mask itself is made predominantly out of fabric, which is screen printed, and there is a full face shell underneath. It's not one of those ones that extends only halfway, it goes all the way back. And it is designed to perfectly recreate the look of Toby's version of Spidey. What I'm trying to say is the amazing Spider-Man mask, which we'll check out in just a second, has a completely different shaped face shell. That is some awesome attention to detail. Now, it is a little bit uncomfortable to wear a mask with a face shell, but this is pretty much what the actors wear when they don the suit in the movie. So, it's just something you're going to have to get used to. One creature comfort, though, is that you can remove the lenses. You might not think this is the biggest deal in the world, but trust me, when you're cosplaying as Spidey, being able to pop the lenses out and quickly check your phone is a very big deal. So I'm glad that they incorporated magnetic lenses. The lenses themselves are made up of multiple different layers. You can see there is a hook on the top and bottom section, so it nicely clips in place, and then a magnet on the top corner. It does have a wire mesh on the inside, and they are painted with this gunmetal finish that I really like, and yes, it is movie accurate. And of course, to reinstall it, they simply magnetize in place. As for the raised web lines, they are rubbery, and interestingly enough, they are separate to the mask. I thought they'd be glued down, but I guess that means there's a little bit of flex there, as they are pulled and stretched over the mask itself. But they look great, and super accurate to the film. They also share that 
almost metallic gunmetal finish, so when the light hits it, they look fantastic. The material itself is screen printed, but it's not raised. The texture is just literally printed on the surface, so you don't have to worry about stretching this and the pattern degrading over time. So far, I am really impressed with this mask, but I think we're about to get to my favourite. Now I don't know if it's cheating in some way by declaring I have a favourite before we've even looked at it off the headstand, but I do, and I'm not going to apologise for it. It's this one, the black suit. I absolutely love the way this looks. It is super accurate. There's a sheen to it, a certain metallic finish on the web lines, and those lenses are absolutely stunning. I love the mask for the red and blue suit, but this is something else entirely. You all know, Black Suit Spidey is my guy, and this mask just speaks to me. Just like with the mask from the red and blue suit, here we have the symbiote suit mask off the headstand, and I absolutely love this. There is something about a black suit Spidey that gets my Spidey sense tingling. I'm so sorry, I had to. The construction is exactly the same, a full face shell with the perforation, so it is nice and breathable. The material is screen printed, except this time the pattern on the black sections is actually slightly raised. And it is a little bit shiny, just like we saw from the symbiote suit in the film. The lenses once again are magnetic, so you can remove them, and they are also made up of multiple layers with the mesh and then two clear lenses that they are sandwiched in between. And of course they simply pop back on there. But the web lines are of course the pièce de résistance, just like with the red and blue suit mask, but this time they are even more metallic. You can see how the light plays and dances off the surface, it looks stunning and pretty darn accurate to the movie at the same time. So as I said just before, I reckon this one might just be my favourite. And lastly, here we have the amazing Spider-Man 2 mask. And as you would expect, it's significantly different to the Toby masks. The face shell is a different shape, it's a lot rounder and much more organic, and the neck section extends down a lot lower. So if you are wearing this with a suit, you should be able to either overlap it over your suit or tuck it in under the collar, which is a good thing because it'll make it look far more seamless. The lenses are much bigger and they are bubble lenses, meaning they're not flat on the surface, they are rounded, which is super accurate to the movie. Say what you will about this particular design for Spidey, some people either really love it or really hate it, but they've managed to capture the look almost perfectly. What we are going to do now, again for the last time in this video, is take it off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. Here we have it off the headstand. Now upon placing my order for these masks, this was the one I just happened to be least excited about. Not because I don't like The Amazing Spider-Man, I actually really do enjoy Andrew Garfield in the role, but because the shape of the mask was never really all that appealing to me. It's rather squat, it's very rounded off, and it's quite wide. It does have some redeeming qualities like the massive comic book style lenses, but it just never really spoke to me. Upon receiving it though, now that I have it in hand, I've done a full 180. I really like the way this looks. It also just happens to fit me the best out of the three. Now it does have a zipper closure up the back just like the other masks, and it does have a full face shell on the inside. It's still that same sturdy plastic with the perforations so it is nice and breathable. Except this time there's a little ledge down below where your chin sits on. That means when you're wearing this, it's super sturdy and it's locked in place. You can also still remove the lenses, three magnets on the back, and you have this white mesh on the inside with the clear glossy transparent layer on the outside. Now you may be thinking, oh yes, big lenses means big visibility. Unfortunately, 
No, not really, it's still super hard to see in the mask, so being able to pop the lenses off when you're at a con, quickly check your phone and move on, is definitely a good thing. Now, the raised web lines are just that, they are actually raised. This time, though, they're stuck down to the surface. Now, for the Toby suit, it, I think, made sense for them to be able to move around just a little because they're so much thicker, whereas these being so much thinner would mean that they could get displaced and start to look a little bit weird. They are black, they are really rubbery, so you do still get a little bit of movement there. The red sections are screen printed in the same way as the Toby mask, with the pattern actually embedded into the fabric not sitting on the surface, so it should stand the test of time. The red sections of the mask also have a subtle sheen to them, just like we saw in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Just wrapping up on the third-party unlicensed Spidey masks based off the Raimi trilogy and The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, I do have my clear favourite here, but overall, I'm really happy with all three. They far exceeded my expectations quality-wise from a company that I personally have had no experience with. The fit and finish, the way the magnetic lenses work, how accurate they are, I am thoroughly impressed. Now, as I said earlier, the black suit mask is my favourite, but I'm also leaning towards The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which is one that I really didn't expect to like going in. Do let me know which is your favourite though, down in the comments below. Now I did get mine from Comic Sanctorum, and I've popped the link in the description for your reference purposes only. This is not a promotional video, this is a review on a set of masks I picked up for my own personal collection. They are, at the end of the day, unofficial, unlicensed product. If you are in the description, check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.